Hey there everyone, welcome to another game of NHL 07 full season. This time we're going to see computer versus computer, Colorado Avalanche and Columbus Blue Jackets. Now the date in this game is currently November 17th of, I think it was 2006 or something this game was. Anyway, the next game after this isn't scheduled, or is the next game we're going to see isn't on the calendar date until the de December 22nd. Going by the calendar date in this year, so I'm going to flip here to the calendar screen that I made. Okay, that's not it. There we go. So, currently we just finished week... Okay, there's November 17th. We finished week 11 of football. Okay, this thing is like moving on its own. So anyway, this game is on the 17th. And as you can see, after that we got week 12 of football, which is already auto-skipped because there were no games to be seen that week. So we're going to be seeing 13 of football, which is Tampa Bay at Green Bay. We'll go to the next month, week 14, we've got Cincinnati at Green Bay. Then we go to week 15, where we'll see Kansas City at Miami. We've got week 16, which is Green Bay at New Orleans, before finally we reach December 22nd, which is our next hockey game. After this one, which is Toronto at Chicago, so we're going to be seeing, after this game, or after this video, we got four football games before we even get back into hockey. But, that's going to pretty much be closing the football season because we only got one more regular season week after that before the playoffs. So anyways, let's get on with this game. <clears throat> Colorado, Columbus, Colorado's got first place in the conference and first in the division. As you can see, Columbus is 12th in the conference and 4th in their division. Both teams in the Western Conference. Colorado's got 75% win, Columbus 47%. I don't know why they just don't have the records up there. Wins, losses, and overtime losses instead of winning percentage. Goals for Colorado's averaging go four goals a game. Columbus 3.44. It's really not that far apart. Colorado's got a goals, better goals against. Columbus is actually better on the power play, but Colorado's better on the penalty kill. Look at the goalies. We got Josie Theodore of Colorado, and we got Steve Mason of Columbus. Now, I created Steve Mason just because he was a rookie, and I was creating players, and he was real popular, so I decided to put him in the game. I don't know why I even bothered, because usually I don't care about other teams, but anyway, that's how that happened. Here we go. Into the, here we go with the game. Take a look at. Well, I was going to take a look at both teams' jerseys. There's an alternate jersey. There's their home jersey. Can't take a look at Colorado's because I have to put, make them one of the user teams. But I don't think. Actually, Colorado I think also has the Quebec Nordiques old jerseys. But when we get to the playoffs, round one in the playoffs, I'm going to have everyone use like vintage jerseys for round one if they have them I guess some teams like Nashville who doesn't have a vintage jersey because they went long, long enough and teams like Columbus Columbus Blue Jackets and the Colorado Avalanche. Now this is going to be 
an interesting matchup. He's got a high octane offense up against a real pretty club. The team that's going to prevail here will be the team that works harder and wins the battles along the boards. These guys will be tested here tonight, Craig. They're facing a skilled team that moves the puck extremely well. Well, Jim, the key will be playing sound defense and winning the special teams battle. Now we're ready to drop the puck for the opening faceoff. The faceoff goes to Colorado. A quick shot from the slot. And it's touched for icing. The only thing I hate about this is when you create players, they all look the same. The puck is about to be dropped. I don't have to worry about that about most teams, but my team we do. Pass up to Turgeon. The Blue Jackets have possession and start out of their own zone. Up to Spathos. Shoots the puck from the slot. Here's Joe Sackett to Spathos. Now it's passed to Turgeon. Second. Now it's passed to Nash. Shoots the puck from the wing. Picked up by Brisebois. To Joe Second. Here come the Avalanche as they move out of their own zone. Fires it. Puck jumped on by Westcott. He's behind the net waiting for his mates to get set up. Here's David Vavorty looking for his first shot on net. He picks off the puck. The ref indicates a delayed call. Rip hard from the left. It's called for hooking. This is a former Blackhawk player. I don't know, Jim. I think that one could have gone either way. He didn't have to call it. Actually, I think it was Blackhawks in this game. I think I just put him on some other team. Columbus will try and take advantage of a penalty here. Well, we haven't seen the power play yet tonight, but we know they're going to be a handful. They've got great skill in that first unit. McLean comes the puck in. Animal. Gates out of his net to play the puck. Pass over to He scores! Halfway through the first pick of the game's first goal. Not only can this guy shoot the puck with amazing velocity and accuracy, it's also a heavy shot, which makes it very difficult for the goaltender to handle.
to allow a goal near the end of the period. It can have a huge effect on momentum. To Blue Big shot. He misses. Pass to head to Rock. I think that was Jack Skilly that scored the goal. Man. And the horn signals the end of the first period. We head into the break with the score tied 1-1. Maybe Skilly had the assist, but it's not like the PA announcer said someone else's name. Actually, I might have created Jack Skilly. I don't think he was in this game. I probably created him and got rid of him after Blackhawks got rid of him. Yeah, okay. Still, still he got must have the assist. Um, All I need to do is look at his numbers. I can't check out his profile or anything. Okay, period two. Columbus won't be happy after giving up the tying goal late in the first. Uh, Jim, those late goals can be killers. Let's see if they can put it behind them and get back on track here in the second. And the Avalanche win yet another faceoff. Passes it to Federer. Quick shot. Blocked. Over to Turgeon. Turned over. To Sergei Federer. One time to He scores. Rick Nash. Is there anything Rick Nash can't do with the puck? When he steps on the ice, he's instant offense for his team. Nash is a franchise player. Up to Spatos. 
to Joe Sackick, who's been a regular season and playoff MVP in the league. Now ahead to Sackick. To Heaton. Touch it for him. Animal denies him. Here come the Blue Jackets, quickly out of their own zone. He steals the puck. Shoots the puck. Jumped off by Columbus. Passed over to Kleslock. Out comes Rick Nash. And he passes it to Westcott. Into the corner he goes. Shoots the puck. Oh, he bailed his team out with that save. If he didn't make it, they'd be down by two. Jack, one-time shot. Missed the net. Here's Jordan Leopold. He passes it to Questlock. Fritchie. Way too many post hits in this game. Up to down. Less than two minutes to go in the second period. Passed ahead to Brule. Now it's passed to Ruff. Passed over to Brule. And Theodore makes a nice save. Here's Guisbois. He passes the puck to Dowd. Keeley. The horn signals the end of the second. 2-1 the score as we head for the intermission. that's really annoying about this game is, is all the shots that completely miss the net. I mean, if any NHL player missed the net like they do in some of these games, especially it seems like my players, they would not be playing in the NHL. And there must be like, you count all the shots that I have, my shot total, I'll bet you if it weren't for the shots that missed the net, I'd have double. So there are just so many shots I'll be like just a matter of like a couple feet in front of the net and I'll miss the net by like 20, 30 feet. It's like I don't know how they could sh shoot the puck that far off the mark. I mean I could see if you're down in the center ice or something or at the blue line even missing it, but sometimes you're really close and you can totally miss the net. Anyway, here we go on to the final, well I guess I should say third period, never know when I might go into overtime. as the third period gets going. We're ready for the face-off. The face-off goes to the Avalanche. Adam Wood shoots the puck. Jumped on by Columbus. Here's Rick Nash. He's had a good, hard-working, blue-collar game to Joe Sackett. Now it's passed to Nash. Finds it to Rick Nash. Shoots. He misses. Here's Sergei Federal. He's into the corner. To Spathos. Here's Churchill. What a gritty performance. Oh, there's a shot. Animal makes the save. Columbus will get a chance to move up. He turned the puck over. To the Perrier. Now a quick pass up to Modine. To Verdina. Now it's passed to Hayduk. To Milan Hayduk. Here's it right on. Here's Freddie Modine, who's got a goal in this game. And that's icing. What really impresses me about this guy is how quick he gets across the crease. But he likes to stand tall in there, and that makes it easy to get post to post. The faceoff goes to Colorado. Shoots the puck. Along the boards. Jack, it goes wide. McLean shoots the puck. Puck corralled by Succi. 
He takes the shot, dropped in front of the net over to Paulson, and another shot. Jack McLean. <laughs> you can tell Skilly's creative because they call him Jack. Every creative player, they can't say their last name. And it's passed ahead to Spastis. Delayed penalty coming up. Jack Spitoff gets called for hooking. Now he's not thrilled with the penalty call, but he's only got himself to blame. Again. They weren't able to capitalize on their first power play. Let's see if they can do it here. Off to Spatos. Shoots the puck. Here's Merrick Spatos. It's cleared out by Perard. Here's John Michael Lyle. He's only 5'10, 185 pounds, but he was a great draft by Colorado. Perard dumps the puck in to Hebe. Intercepted to Rick Nash. With some speed into the attacking zone, Theodore shuts the door. Hadouk to Spatos, and he carries the puck into the zone. Big shot from the right. Bernard, he clears it. Here's John Michael Lyles. He passes the puck to Spatos. So much of this game is about confidence. Well, that's just it. Once a guy's found the scoreboard, he's always hungry for more. Defenders should be keeping tabs on this game. The faceoff goes to the Blue Jackets. Corralled by Colorado to Arneson. Arneson goes offside and the play is stopped. I think Tyler Arneson surprised a lot of people around the league. He was the 183rd pick overall in 98. He already looks like a solid top six forward in the league. Well, you know, it goes to show you scouts don't always know it all. Shoots it! That save was a dagger in their heart, Jim. What a great opportunity it was to get the tying goal late here in the third. Colorado is now 0 for 2 in the power play. Over to Brisbane. Outstart the Avalanche. Here come the Avalanche. On the attack again, desperately seeking the tying goal. Less than two minutes to go here in the third. Up to Hedu. Now over to Arneson. To Herdina. He gives it up to the Perrier. Now passed over to Herdina. Under a minute to go in the third. Both saved by Theodore. He passes the puck to Beninen. Outstart the avalanche. They're over the line and on the attack. To Hedin. Fires from the slot. To Nash. Now he moves the puck into the attacking zone. To Lyles. Right in front. Behind the net. Quick up to Federer. Now he moves the puck into the neutral zone. To Rick Nash. Now again. Blackhawks too.
So you can see Columbus had, or Colorado had more shots. But Columbus had more goals. He also had more hits. He was double the hits. That's, the numbers are so weird. Columbus has more goals. Colorado's got more shots. Columbus has more hits. Colorado let him face offs. And camera attack. Columbus had more penalty minutes. Columbus was 1 for 1 on power play. Colorado was 0 for 2. I forgot to mention, they showed Colorado's coach Joe Quinville earlier in the game. He's now the Chicago Blackhawks head coach. So, yeah, there's a lot of former Blackhawk players you're seeing here and current, like current, the current coach. You can't switch coaches in this game, which is unfair. Blackhawks head coach in this game is Trent Yanni. After that, they had Dennis Savard, and then now they got Joe Quinville. Whoops. Wrong button. I do it again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off first of all. Okay, we're going to go ahead and show the standings now. It has, you see the date up there says November 17th. The next scheduled game isn't until... Let's take a look at this. There's what the calendar, Chicago Blackhawks calendar looks like. So we're going to skip over... Ducks, Canucks, Flames, Oilers, Stars, Blues, Predators, Wild, Coyote, Wild again, Oilers, Blues again, Red Wings, Columbus, Colorado, and Na Nashville once again until finally we will see this game right here, the 22nd. And you know, you notice the calendar is weird for December in this game. Notice December 1st, and look above it, it's Friday. Instead of starting with Sun, the week starting with Sunday, it starts with Friday. I think the reason they did that is because when they drew up the calendar, it only goes like five weeks. There's one, two, three, four, five. We'll see with Friday starting on a Wednesday, or well, it would be Friday if it was the other, if it was an original calendar. So with the first starting on a Friday and the 31st ending on a Sunday, they'd have to have a six like six squares here for the calendar and I don't think they could do that so that's why they rearranged the calendar to look like that. December's the only month that's kept it. That's why when I showed it on the screen I went and modified that's this sort of thing. I went and modified the calendar so it looked more like a real calendar with sun week starting with Sunday. That's why I got six squares in there. So you take a look at the Sunday in this one, it goes all the way to the bottom of the screen where it is in regular NHL when it stops there. So anyway, we'll go ahead and show the standings now and in the next hockey game we'll be a month ahead of the month later, so we'll show the standings again because a lot can happen in that one month. Okay, we'll start with the Northeast Division, Buffalo Sabres. First place, got Ottawa a couple games behind them. Boston, Montreal, and Toronto are trailing way back. New York Rangers in first place, Philadelphia right behind them. Southeast, we got Carolina in first place, and they got a pretty good lead. Seven points ahead of Florida, so that's three and a half games. Eastern Conference totals, this is what it looked like if the playoffs were to end today. The New York Islanders would be at the New York Rangers, be Florida at Buffalo, New Jersey at Carolina, and Ottawa at Philadelphia. But we're a long way from the end of the season. In the Central Division, we've got Nashville in first place. My Blackhawks are a game behind them. And see, it's hard for me to hold first place in this game because I only play 
a fraction of the games. There's a total of 82 regular season games. And I only play... Okay, there's seven road games and eight home games. So I play a total of 15 out of 82 games. So the computer's got a huge control over most of the games, whereas in Tecmo Super Bowl 3 Final Edition, I only play 16 games. I play, I think, 9. And the 16, I play a large percentage of them games. So, I might not win the division this game. You know what's weird, though? Back here in 2007, Detroit Red Wings were like the best team in the division. Actually, probably the best team in the league back then. Detroit usually Detroit won their division like 10 years in a row I think up until 2010 I think the Blackhawks won the division before that it was Detroit for 10 years but anyways it's weird in this game they're in last place so in the Pacific Division we got the Sharks in first place Anaheim right behind them we got the Kings just a game behind Anaheim and I'm only half game behind the Sharks. Over here you got Colorado in first place. Calgary second. Right behind them. And you got Vancouver not too far behind them. Edmonton's the only team in that division that's really doing bad. It's the only team under 500. The Western Conference right now would be the Minnesota Wild at Colorado. Anaheim at Nashville. Chicago at San Jose and Vancouver at Calgary. And for those who don't know, the playoffs are only going to be one game elimination, so we will see every playoff game too. And just like with the regular season, when we get to the playoffs, I'll be playing the Chicago Blackhawks. All the other teams will be controlled by computer. Here's a look at the NHL. Rangers have the best record in the league right now. Where the Blackhawks rank 12th in the league. So, I just hope you enjoyed the game. I think for the next couple videos, I'm probably going to do Super Mario Brothers 3 World 5, and then the next video after that will be World 6. And I'll probably get back to doing some more football games tomorrow if I have time. I don't know if I'll have time tomorrow because even though I get off at 3:30. Tomorrow's payday for me. I have a pretty payday for my friend, so I'm planning on getting some work done to my car, and my friend's probably going to want to ride to cash his paycheck, so most likely going to be a pretty busy day. But I hope you enjoyed the game. See you in the next video.